Monster Beverage has been a phenomenal performer over a very long time. Uh, the business is very capital white, so basically they make the syrup. Uh, Coca-Cola is a key bottling partner for them. Um, I think part of the reason Monster has been such a big success is that it, it serves a part of the market that people aren't paying much attention to. Um, so Monster, it doesn't speak to investment bankers. It doesn't speak to people working in the CBD. It speaks to young guys who have hard jobs and they want a big, affordable, cold drink that's going to give them energy to get through the day. Um, and just like how I'd say Walmart for a long time was overlooked by Wall Street and kind of derided for serving a clientele that wasn't fancy, um, Monster's cl core clientele is not fancy, but it's growing. And energy drinks as a category have been growing for a very long time. Uh, Monster's been gaining share within that because it's an attractive value proposition. Um, and they've executed really well. I think that they're also, the core Monster brand is driving most of the profits today. Um, and in the US, but they've been moving into a lot more markets and widening distribution. I think that's really attractive. Uh, I also think that there's potential for this to get acquired at some point. So Coke owns close to 20% of it. And if you step back and look at some incentives here, um, Coke's volume is very, their volume growth is very low. They're acquisitive. Energy drinks are growing. Monster is growing quickly within that. Um, Monster's two leaders of the business. They're not quite co-founders. Uh, but the two guys running the show or, or getting on up there in age um, may not mind a liquidity event. You kind of put all those things together, plus they already have a strategic agreement between them. And I think there's, there's a good chance that Coke steps in at some point to, to own this business outright.